Um, we want to try and find out if you have any of the original paperwork, any of the original information about what size system you have, and maybe if you had some different type of specialty resin in there. If you know for sure you have standard resin and you just simply don't know the size you have, we can help determine that based on the size of the resin tank. So we would need to get, a, say, a picture of the placard down near the bottom of the tank. Uh, you may have a cover on it that you have to remove or you have to look around the back. But that placard is going to give us the manufacturer's information to tell us what size tank it is. And then we can determine the amount of volume of resin that you need to purchase. Now, inside of there, the resin that's in there generally is going to last 12 to 15 years. Now, some municipal supplies now that, you know, all of them have to chlorinate the water to make it safe. Some have started switching to chloramines over the past, say, five or 10 years. That will significantly shorten the life of any water softener resin. Now, our Genesis line uses Aldex 10% resin, which is a much more durable resin. Now, that will help increase the life of it, but eventually the chlorine, the chloramines especially, are going to get to that resin. And even iron levels, you know, up to two parts per million, a softener can handle it, but it does start to shorten the life of the system. So, with that being said, we want to determine how much you need, what type, and um, then get you the supplies that you, you need. Now, inside of here is not just resin. Two-thirds of this tank is filled with resin, but going down the center is a riser tube. The water is going, that goes into your house is going to be on one side of this tube, and the water that goes through the resin is on the other. With, with softeners, to replace your resin and not replace your riser tube doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, your riser tube can also be affected by chloramines. It's plastic. Chloramines will break down plastic resin beads as well as the plastic screen that's on the bottom. So this is your bottom distributor. It has slats in it so the water can pass through but not the resin. Over time, this, this, this can get brittle. Okay, and if it gets too brittle and the water pressure pushes the resin up against it or even the gravel underbedding, you can get it to crack and then the resin gets on the wrong side of the tube and ends up in your house. So that is a nightmarish situation that you don't want to incur uh, in your home or you simply just don't have any water pressure when your softener is in service because the resin at the bottom has now turned to a soft plastic, almost like a peanut butter substance and you're not gonna get water flow. That is a really good indicator that your resin needs to be replaced. So when you're doing this, first and foremost, let's determine if you do need new resin, how much do you need, and then um, whether or not you're going to be able to tackle this project on your own. It is basically a two-man job. So taking your water softener, the bypass that's on there, or if you have a built-in bypass into your plumbing supply, you want to put the unit in bypass, relieve the pressure, and then disconnect your control head from your bypass. Again, this is a general video, so every bypass, every installation is going to be a little bit different, but generally you want to get that control head disconnected from your bypass, and then unscrew your head from the tank, and then once you do that, you'll see your center tube in there, and you'll see down in there and you got your resin. Now, turning that tank over or siphoning, you can siphon some of the water out, or you can simply, with another person, turn that tank over, maybe if you can get it outside. Um, and generally, what you wanna do is get it turned over and get um, a couple of Rubbermaid bins is usually a good way to do it, maybe two or three of them, and have two guys uh, hold it upside down or turn it on its side and you can use a hose to put water up in there and kind of force the resin out. But it is a, 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 a tough task. So two people is definitely recommended. And then once you get that riser tube out, it's not connected to the bottom. It's just sitting in there loosely. Uh, once you get that riser tube out, you get all the resin out. You want to determine, do you want to replace it with basic 8% resin or 10% resin? Um, when we sell our systems, again, our Genesis come with 10%. You can get a basic 8%. If you're on a private well, you don't necessarily have to get 10%. But when we sell our uh, rebeds, we usually uh, always recommend you get a funnel. This will make life a lot easier when filling it. We, it also comes with a cap. So when you go to take out all your resin and you replace your riser tube, 
you're basically going to cut it to the same length as your old riser tube. So when you receive it, it's going to be longer than what you need. You're going to cut it nice and flush, kind of clean up the edges, put it back in the tank, and you're going to have to put one of these caps in the riser tube because what you don't want is to have resin go down into that riser tube and actually cause an issue with the resin getting on the other side. So that cap is gonna be important to uh, block that resin from going in there. Now that's just gonna be temporary. So once it's in the tank, you put your uh, riser over it and you're going to um, fill the tank. I have one here, I'm gonna bring it in. This kind of shows the tank with the control head off of it. You've got your cap that you get with your funnel. You're gonna take your cap, and put it in that riser tube. Once you center that tube, it's going to fit into kind of a dimple in the bottom of the tank. So it'll be nice and uh, settled in that bottom. Now, if it doesn't sit exactly straight, it's not a big deal. You can straighten it later when you go to put the head on. You're gonna put your funnel on, and then you're gonna pour your resin in. Now, keep one thing in mind. When you buy your resin, they're gonna come in cubic foot bags. So if you have, let's say a 32,000 grain, that is a one cubic foot bag. If you have a 40,000, that's one and a quarter. So you would get a full bag plus a quarter cubic foot. That would be a partial bag. A half bag if you have a 48,000. A 64,000 is two cubic foot. So you're gonna get two cubic feet. The other part of this is when you start to get up into the one and a half, two cubic foot, two and a half, three cubic foot size systems, these larger systems, it's really important that you do get gravel underbedding. Gravel underbedding does help with flow rate on bigger systems. It's not as impactful on smaller systems, but on bigger systems, it is important to help keep the flow rate up and less pressure on that bottom uh, distributor basket. So once you've now uh, loaded the resin in the tank, it's gonna fill it up to about two thirds of the tank. You are not filling the tank all the way to the top. That is a different type of a system. 99% of the softeners out there are going to be um, two thirds full, maybe slightly less, it might appear that way, but that is the way they're engineered. There needs to be about a third of the tank that is freeboard space so the resin can expand. Then once you remove, when well, you got all your resin in there, you remove your cap, you take your control head, you want to screw it back down, make sure that you center that tube so you can get it down on there, and then simply tighten it down, a good half turn past hand tight, and then reconnect your system to your bypass, and you're going to need to then slowly let the water back into the system. I usually recommend that when you go to put the water back into your system, you go to open up your bypass, whatever type bypass you have, and you go to supply it, you wanna start a manual regeneration and get the system into a backwash or a rinse because once you start pushing the water back into the control valve, into the tank, you wanna force that trapped air out and down the drain rather than up into the house plumbing. So that's a really uh, quick pointer on re-attaching uh, your system and getting it back online is to start a regeneration. Once you're all hooked up, you don't have any leaks, you start a manual regeneration and then you crack open your water supply to the unit and it will simultaneously push the air out down the drain. You'll start to get some discoloration from the liquid uh, 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 moisture that's on the resin. You get that out down the drain, let it rinse for a good couple of minutes. And then you can just bring it back around and start a full-on regeneration and get yourself to back, back to soft water again. If you have any questions on rebedding a softener, uh, you can give one of our technicians a call or email us. Best is if you have questions on rebedding, you're going to have to give us some information first on the size system you have, the type it is, or we can help you with determining that before you purchase any resin or gravel or risers. You can email us at support at discountwatersofteners.com and one of our technicians will be happy to help.